If you're into older computers and software, you've probably messed around with old web browsers at one point or another. Maybe you fired up Internet Explorer or Netscape Navigator on that old Windows 98 machine that you have. It's pretty cool to look back and see just how far web browsers have advanced over the past 25 years. But trying to use these old web browsers to explore the modern web is pretty challenging to say the least. Because these browsers are so old, they're just not capable of displaying the advanced web pages that make up the modern web. Going to sites like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, and even the regular Google search interface is is impossible. Or so you thought. Because I've got all of those pages loaded up right here in Internet Explorer 5.0. Yeah, a web browser released in 1999. And no, there's no video editing magic going on here. This is the real deal, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Let's get started. You've probably guessed that there's a lot going on behind the scenes to make this all possible. In fact, this old version of Internet Explorer is not directly navigating to these web pages, because there's an entire separate computer being utilized in this setup, specifically a Raspberry Pi running the Browse Service server. Browse Service is the project that makes this all possible. What it does is creates a proxy server that the old web browser on the old computer can connect to. This server runs an embedded version of Google Chrome in a headless state on the Linux machine, which is the program actually doing the web browsing. We'll talk more about how this works later in the video. But before we get to that, here's what you're going to need. First is a Linux machine to run the browse service server. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 in the CrowPi 2 kit that was recently sent to me by Elecro. Thanks guys once again. You can check out that video here. I used the Raspberry Pi imager to install the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. Second is obviously an old computer running an old web browser. In my case, I'm using a Windows 98 second edition machine with Internet Explorer 5. There's a table over on Browse Services GitHub page that lists the supported operating systems and web browsers. Believe it or not, you can go all the way back to Windows for Workgroups 3.11 running Internet Explorer 4, just with some limitations. Both machines need to have a network card installed, as we'll be using an Ethernet cable to connect them together. On top of this, you'll need a way for the Linux machine to connect to your home network. A Raspberry Pi 3 or newer works perfectly in this case, as it has both an Ethernet jack and built-in wireless, which I used to connect it to my home network. You could also use another Ethernet interface if you have one. Next up, we have to get browse service installed. You'll be spending most of your time in terminal, so I did everything over SSH. And since all of the commands are listed on the page, you can just copy and paste each one as you follow along. Just take note of the installing dependencies section, as this will differ depending on which Linux distro you're using. Also, if you're using Raspberry Pi OS, ensure that you first modify the sources.list file as it lays out in the first bullet point. You'll need to do this before running the sudo apt install command listed above. To do this, type cd slash etc slash apt and hit enter, and then type sudo nano sources.list and hit enter. Uncomment the third line in the document, and then add contrib to the very end of both the first and third line. Then press Ctrl S to save and Ctrl X to exit. Then run sudo apt update. Once this finishes, it's a good idea to run sudo apt-get upgrade to make sure all of your existing packages are up to date. After this, you can copy the long command at the very beginning of the guide and paste it in your terminal window. There are also separate instructions if you're running Fedora or Arch Linux. Once you install the dependencies, you can move on to installing browse service itself, which is the same process regardless of which distro you're running. You first have to download the latest release of browse service linked in the guide. Since I'm doing this over SSH, I'll make a new folder on my desktop and use the wget command to download the package to the system. Once it downloads, use the unzip command to extract the archive. This will extract a folder named browse service with the version number at the end. Just use the cd command to change to this folder. After that, just follow along with the rest of the guide. Even though there are only four commands listed, it will take a while as you're going to be compiling a copy of browse service. Now, you might be able to get browse service to work with its default settings. In the browse service directory, type release slash bin slash browse service to launch it. By default, browse service will listen on 127.0.0.1 port 8080 for new connections. Now, you can set it up to where browse service can accept connections 
functions from outside of your local network, but we're not going to touch on that today. The default settings didn't work in my case, so I had to modify the network adapter settings and configure both machines with a static IP address. Here's how you do this. On the Windows 98 machine, open up Control Panel, double click on Network, then find TCP IP in the list and click Properties. Here, you'll want to specify a static IP address and manually set the subnet mask. In my case, I'm using 192.168.1.5 for the IP. I'd recommend using 255.255.255.0 for the subnet mask. On the Raspberry Pi, open up the terminal, type this command, and press the down arrow key until you're at the bottom of the document. Uncomment the interface ETH0 line, then uncomment the static IP underscore address line and type in the address you want to use. For the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to use 192.168.1.4. The slash 24 at the end corresponds to the subnet mask that we set on the Windows 98 PC, so we're good here. Press Control S to save, and then Control X to close. Now, back to the browse service directory. Type in the same command as last time, but before hitting enter, type a space and then hyphen hyphen http hyphen listen hyphen addr equals and then the static IP address that you just specified in the configuration file. For me, it's 192.168.1.4. Then add the port by typing colon 8080. Press enter. If you did everything correctly, you should be able to head over to your old machine and open up the old web browser. Type the static IP address of the Linux machine in the address bar followed by the port and press enter. If you see another toolbar appear underneath the address bar, congrats, you've successfully connected to the browse service server. And you'll do all of your web browsing from this one page. I know it sounds kind of confusing, but here's the explanation. When you type a web address into Browse Services address bar and hit enter, you're essentially controlling the headless instance of Google Chrome that's running on the Linux machine. So how does it display the web page on the old machine? Well, it technically doesn't. What you're looking at are images of the web page, not the web page itself. Browse Service works by sending compressed images over an HTTP connection to the old computer and displays them on the singular web page that the old browser has navigated to. This page runs a JavaScript application that accepts input from the user. When you click a link, for example, Browse Service forwards this input back to the headless Chrome instance, which will then navigate to that link. If you put this in front of somebody and didn't explain what was going on, they would probably think that these web pages are running natively on the old computer. Though there is a bit of latency when typing things out or hovering over links, but this is to be expected. The only huge giveaway is Internet Explorer's status bar, which will be constantly downloading new images, as every change to the page, even the slightest hovering over a button, requires a new image to be created, compressed, sent over to the old computer, and then displayed to you. It's really incredible. So yes, this actually works, but you can't expect the web browsing experience to be just like on a modern computer. Because of how browse service works, there's going to be latency. You'll especially notice this on video streaming sites like YouTube. Initially, the video frame rate will be pretty bad, but you can adjust the image quality by using the buttons at the top right. Lowering the quality will result in a higher frame rate. I set this to 10, the lowest possible setting, and was actually able to play one of my YouTube videos at a much higher frame rate than I was expecting. Obviously, the image quality is poor, but it's just incredible to see this working. The only two downsides are audio playback and audio video sync. Again, since the actual web browsing is being done on the Linux machine, this is where the audio is going to play from. Though the developer of Browse Service has said that audio streaming to the client computer may be coming in a future version. And because of the latency, the video you see on the old computer will be out of sync with the audio. It's more noticeable with face cam footage. It's the same way with the clipboard. You won't be able to copy and paste text from browse service to somewhere else on your computer or vice versa. But there is a little clipboard button next to the image quality controls that can help with this. It will bring up a window that acts as a proxy between browse services clipboard and the operating systems clipboard. 
Now, if you intend to use this old machine pretty often, I'd recommend setting Browse Services web page as your home page. You can also get rid of the browser's address bar to avoid accidentally navigating away from this page. In Internet Explorer, just right-click anywhere on the toolbar and uncheck address bar. And I gotta say, this looks really convincing. Just the fact that somebody spent time to create this project and make it available to all of us for free is super awesome. So huge thanks to the developer. I'll again have the GitHub page down below with all the information you need to do this yourself. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.